Hey, um, this video, uh, you know, um, spoiler alert or warning, like, this video is not going to be for everyone. Uh, it's def it's a video about trauma because, like, I, so I, I just went and got a little bit of breakfast and on my way home, I just, I just started, I just started crying and, um, and then I opened my email, right, and <laughs> it was an email. I don't know why I'm on the list serve or whatever, but it, it was an email from Microsoft Research, and it said, Microsoft Research is hiring. And the first thing that came to my mind was, like, blacks need not apply. <laughs> like, not even in a joking way. Like, in 2020, I, I was like, I, I deleted the email because I'm like, this, this is not for me. Like, I like I'm not the target audience for this email and like I'm so like it just it is like a really nice day outside it is a really nice day like I my breakfast was actually like really good but when I open that email that's really how I feel and like if you guys are people who actually like read um my, my website at the top of every page it says like on my way to becoming an AI researcher and I think I had just built up some confidence I don't know where I pulled the confidence from but I, I had this idea that like I could do it and I just I don't think that I can anymore and I just want um I think it's more important to be alive than it is to have a career like when I walked into my apartment and I thought about the words I wanted to use to explain this that's what came to mind like it's more important to be alive than it is to you know have a career and what I mean by that is like in some of the last videos maybe like the last two the one where I kind of talked about why I have to talk about social issues and not just tech um those those the issues and the horror that I felt in a lot of those teams with a lot of those people and a lot of those companies in the comment of one of those videos I wrote, what is heavenly for them is hell for me. Because that's what people don't understand. Like, what we've built up has become so good for some people that I feel like they would kill and destroy to protect it. And it does not include people like me. Like, it doesn't include us we don't belong there and it it i just think it's more important for us to be like very honest about the society and the way where the society is right now right now as opposed to trying to you know sugarcoat it and, and make it sound better for i don't know who but um to try to pretend like it's something else because I do think that when I think about Nora sometimes Nora is my friend who committed suicide in a Stanford dorm um, and they, they found her body in the dorm and I, I think about her experience a lot and what I and parts of the experience you know that like she she didn't actually share with me any of her struggles but I don't really feel like she needed to because I feel like I already know. I I already know. Um, and the weird part is like they don't care. They don't like if we die, if we leave, if we don't occupy any space, it's better for them because like they don't have to change um but if we enter the spaces they have to change 
Okay, and the change is uncomfortable and hard. Um, and I don't think it's going to happen. And I wanted to, to tie this back to another example um, that I, I've had in my life. Maybe this is the reason I was crying on the bus, because when I read that email and then <laughs> I just thought about just the sheer number of like adverse experiences I've had in my life it just felt like I don't even know why I'm still alive you know like I probably should not be alive like I don't just the sheer number of times in the last maybe like four years that my own mother has like you know thrown me to the wolves in terms of like I was already in a space where I was like near death and she was right there to like light the match and sort of like you know if I was right on the edge of like falling off the cliff she was right there with the boot like it's okay bitch I got you and just kicks me over the edge just just every time so the fact that I've been able to survive that and all of the other things (laughs) it was just shocking to myself and it brought me to tears it was just like it's another one of the reasons why over the last year, one thing, I, it, t- it took me a, a really, a while, it's taken me this long to get into a groove, right, of trying to tell a story or, like, say, like talk about it, even in small ways, because this is, I'm just, I just fucking turned on the camera, right, I didn't even, like, this is not some high level production I didn't script this this is literally just me turning on the camera and like starting to say something because I do feel like a lot of people are saying nothing which is not helpful at all like a really big part of growing and developing as a young person is being able to see models of yourself in the world and then think I can do that and then when it when those models though become too far away from your own identity as if as in if you only see like white people doing something and you never see a black body doing it you start to get this mental model of like black people can't do that only white people can do this only tall people can you know what i'm saying like if you only see one type of person doing something and you don't see people like you doing it you start to feel like you cannot do it that's just it's just a thing that happens with like human development and and this is why i think it's really important uh because i do i just i know personally like i only have well i deleted everyone else so now i have like 67 or something facebook friends But a lot of those friends are black parents and black mothers and black fathers to specifically like black daughters. And these are black daughters who look like me. And I don't really see anybody else out in the world teaching them how to honestly navigate society and giving imagery of like what it's really like to just like go outside and be normal because like... Um, chances are those girls are going to grow up to be more like me than like you or really any of the other depictions that we have. All of the television shows, and I've said this before, besides like Grownish, don't actually portray what it's like to just live as a black person in the middle class. But, you know, if all of these, I'm just thinking about the children of the people that I know, if all of their children stay in school, they're all going straight to the middle class and no one has provided any sort of context or imagery around what that's like and I've realized for myself like not only do I have to be present in like the things that I'm experiencing but I also have to like feed back information to other people who like don't know what it's like because they're simply like in their homes right and they're in their little bubble with their communication with like their spouse and their children but like that's it like they're not connected to the larger society and I just am and I don't like it but you know it is what it is but going back so this this video is about trauma and I I wanted to give like a really concrete example here because I feel like I actually don't know yet how or what it looks like these like uh what do you call it like spin-off effects of like the adverse experiences that have happened in terms of like my career 
I don't actually know. I feel like I don't have a career anymore. I, I feel like all I have are the experiences that I've had in the past and ways that I can unpack those and just translate them into projects that I work on, you know, in my free time for free on my own. Like, that's the only thing I really see as, like, a sure shot in the future in terms of really, you know, whatever I thought would be, like, being an AI researcher. But maybe in another lifetime. And I think I'm just going to change the headline because I think I'm going to kill that dream. Um, but the point is, okay, so so I wanted to relate this back to, um, but it, maybe it's sad, but I think it's just useful to just, you know, just talk about it. Because, like I said, no one else is. Um, to, to rape. Um, rape is actually something that is unfortunately very normalized in this society and I too am a person who has been raped now like in my family um like the first time I was raped was by someone it was like a member of my family not like they weren't blood related to me it was like the father it was like my cousin's father um and what I realized like after the fact was that like growing up he was like that person who you know it's like they're, they always like take an interest in you but then it just like you're, you're like a kid so like you don't even know you're just like oh this is fine or, or I don't know you don't really have opinions about it but then you, you also realize it makes you feel very different about your cousin because like I'm actually pretty close with my cousin and like one day she's probably gonna like you know go off and get married and I'm just saying I know a lot of people in the society and it's like it it's just really confusing to me because I don't know how to walk through the world right knowing that she is joining into this new family but it's like her father who's probably going to be at the wedding is like the person who raped me and I, you know, I, I've spoken on it with my family. It, I, this is coming up because uh, there was a, um, there's some, it's like an, an HBO Max documentary with uh, Marilyn Manson's ex-girlfriend, the girl from Westworld, that actress. Um, she went on The View and she has a show that basically talks all about how she's speaking out on the abuse that she uh, went through. And now some people are saying that, you know, the abuse that she went through wasn't real and she's faking it and she's just trying to make him look bad. And I don't think that that's actually important because, like, what I know from my own lived experience is that, like, so many people, my family doesn't even believe me after I told them what happened, they never, they don't believe me. And so they still like talk to this person who literally raped me as a child. <laughs> and they like, they're just like, Oh, this is normal. Like, this is fine. Everyone move forward in society. And you're just like, what the fuck? Like, I, well, maybe not you, this is in my mind, this is what I'm thinking. Um, and so it, it's just another reason that makes me feel like my family is trash. But, um, that, the, I, like, I, when, when that happened to me, the, I, there were, I didn't have any skills or information to understand how to deal with it, okay? Like, I didn't know that you're supposed to report this to someone. I didn't understand how to communicate to police officers. I didn't know that, like, rape, w I'm not going to say I didn't know, yeah, I didn't know that rape was a crime punishable by anything. Like, I knew it was, like, looked down upon in society, but I didn't know, like, what you're supposed to do when it happens or that people get in trouble for it in real life, right? Because, like, in the black community, there's a lot of shit that happens and no one's ever held accountable. People just, it's like they kill people, they shoot people, people die, all type of crazy shit. And everyone just, like, moves on with their life. Like, there's just zero accountability for everything. You can go back to my, like, nigger logic videos. I feel like a lot of it stems from there. But, like, um... So that, that was when I was, like, I think, yeah, I was, like, a, a senior in high school. So I was, like, 17 or, yeah, like, 17. So I was, like, in the early parts. I, like, just turned 17. And then um, when I had, like, my first boyfriend, that was, like, pretty later, like, later. Um, 
<laughs> it's f funny enough, like, uh, you know, he raped me as well. And um, I remember, like, the night that it happened because, um, like, we, we'd, we'd had, like, sex before, but um, this night he just... I don't even like he basically like ripped my pants off like turned me over and then like okay and then and then had sex with me but like I know like he I couldn't even talk like he just literally he was way bigger than me and way stronger than me like I it, it wasn't even like a conversation like it was just and I was just shocked like after it happened I still didn't talk I just like he drove me t to, like, the BART station because I lived, uh, I think I was living in, like, Hercules or something at the time. So, he's like, oh, do you, or, um, you know, he was like, oh, do you want me to give you a ride? I'm like, no, it's okay. I'll take the, the train or whatever. And so, he drops me off at the train station. And, like, to him, I think it was fine, right? Like, he didn't, I don't know. I feel like he knows what he did, right? But I don't think he understood, like, what I was going through because... I so I go into the train station as soon as I sat down on the platform I just started fucking bawling I was just crying my fucking eyes out and three trains that were going in the direction that I needed to go passed and I was still just sitting there fucking crying like I didn't call anyone I didn't text message anyone I didn't I didn't really say anything I just sat there and cried for like an hour and a half and then once I had cried like so much that there weren't any more tears to cry then I got on the train and I went home and then I remember like once I got home I I took a bath because I was like oh my god I feel dirty but it wasn't the dirty where you're like you know there's like dirt on your clothes and your clothes are dirty so with uh you know washing detergent the clothes can get clean it wasn't like that it was like i am no longer um like i no longer have value as a woman in society because this is the second time that i've been raped and what i know from like this is me at going back to what I felt in my head at that time so I was like well everything I've seen on television um about healthy relationships tells me that like men who love their partners they you know they don't rape them so that means that this guy who I was in a relationship with that means that he doesn't value me he doesn't love me for whatever reason you know like it and I, and I didn't I couldn't go further than that to start to rationalize it but I was just like oh, okay so this must mean that I'm not valuable like I, I hold no value as a woman in this society to anyone so I had started making these like mental plans I was like so I can't I can't ever get married I, I can't ever have children I I will never you know be in a relationship with anyone because I am dirty and I am useless and I have no value like that's how I felt so I tried to think of all of these other things that I could be in the society that didn't have anything to do with my womanhood or my femininity because in my mind and at that point in my life I was just like that part of me is dead and so I think for this guy, I don't even, I don't know, I really honestly do not think that he has thought ever about, about what happened that day ever again. Because we, we actually talked again after that, you know, um, and I just didn't, I never brought it up. I just, I never, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know what I thought. I don't know. I guess I thought like, if it meant something to him he would address it like the responsibility should have felt fallen on on him it didn't it didn't make it there was no logic there really it de none of none of the ra uh, ra there it's there's no rationality it doesn't make any sense but i i kept trying to give excuses to it i was like oh yeah you know like 
if he will feel if he felt bad he would have said something and he would we would have talked about it because he's a good guy oh he's middle class oh he lives in the hills oh he has two parents whatever the bullshit reason why i was trying to rationalize like this guy was not a piece of shit and a rapist he was and is and i you know i never reported it and it's like i know who this guy is and in the same way where i talked about you know i i have this idea of my cousin like moving forward in society right marrying someone and bringing her father into this new um relationship I think that the same is true of this guy. You know, this guy is going to marry someone. He's going to have children with someone. And, you know, his parents are going to look at him with so much pride. And they're going to be like, yeah, like, we've done so good with our son. And it's like, little do they know, I'm sitting right here. And, like, I know that he raped me. And I know how shitty of a guy he is. And, and he knows. But the society doesn't know so i guess it doesn't matter right it, d it doesn't matter to his parents that their son is a rapist maybe it's just because there's no newspaper article about it so it's fun right it's okay this is kind of this th this is what i think ab about um man the lasting effects of trauma and especially when i said at the beginning of this uh little spiel or whatever i think it's more important to be alive than to have a career and if you've gotten anything from some of the videos that i've created thus far that have talked about the really shitty experiences that i've had in corporate america like i didn't just have those experiences and then forget you know what i mean like those things happen to me and then i've had to live with the effects of all of those uh, relationships of those bad experiences basically and at no point did anyone ever apologize or try to make it better or, or d just nothing everyone just went on with their lives as if they were the ones who were doing right like they were correct they are right and this is what I want to bring to light this is what I want to talk about. It's very hard to put words to it, but I can go back to master the film because right now that's all we have. But there's just a lot of microaggressions on screen there, right? And like when those things happen to you, they feel really, really scary if they haven't happened to you before. And this is why, you know, I want to do a deeper dive into Jasmine as the a character in the film. Because I think we're brushing over how um, how special and youthful and naive Jasmine is when all of these things are happening to her and how little coping skills she has to deal with it. It would and it w actually would it be different really if she was older or if she was more senior. I don't really think anyone ever like grows into having skills for dealing with the horror of white supremacy, but like when you're that young and you're that you're, you're that much of a fresh fish like you really do have this optimism right because you know she's probably b been watching the cheetah girls and watched all these tv shows that show this like integrated multicultural multiracial society and um you know then she gets to college and it's not like that at all there are actual people who are on the campus who are trying to virtually kill her for real um i'm not gonna say the people at microsoft are trying to kill me uh, you know i don't think it's the actual employees who are doing it but like i said there's a lot of shit happening in that community that i was living in with the dead rats in the cemetery and like a lot of the imagery with all the the online stalkers it, you know it's just like i don't know like i will say this Whoever the youth were who were doing it, in that community, the only people who lived there were Microsoft employees, so it's probably their kids. So, I mean, that doesn't really excuse them, right? The blame has to be placed somewhere. Not the point either, though. Like, um, once something traumatic like that happens to a person like Jasmine, and especially coming from... 
I don't want to just keep saying marginalized community, like throwing out this bland term. It's the fact that like if I have a spill or okay, okay, this may be a more clear example. So let's just say that there is a baby, right? And a baby poops into a diaper. Well, we've solved this issue. We know that babies poop. And if the baby poops in the diaper, the diaper catches the poop. It's a disposable diaper or a washable diaper, whichever way. If it's disposable, you can throw it away, get a new diaper. If it's washable, you can put it in the washing machine and get